The picture you see on the screen there is a picture that was taken, uh, oh, about, uh, about five years ago. And that is a picture of the old building. There was at one time, some of you may be familiar with that, it was a steeple that sat on the old building for many years. Oh, I think, Lane, that was what, two years ago? That, uh, yeah, that, that the wind caught that steeple. It had uh, finally rotted and um, just uh, was on its last leg. And it blew down and uh, could not take it anymore. But uh, I won't... I won't say anything about who got up there and had to uh, let that come down all the way because uh, they would get in a lot of trouble uh, for being up there. But um, I, I love that picture, kind of a silhouette. Our logo now uh, for our church is that silhouette. And just a, a beautiful reminder of the beginning of this 60 years of what God has done in Winnemucca through the years through this church. So I'm honored to be a part of that. I, I hope that you are. If you're new here, maybe you're visiting. Uh, this is a day of celebration, not because of of a building, but because God has used his people to reach so many here in Winnemucca, northern Nevada. I, I look at the heroes of the faith that are here this morning, and I'm honored to have them here. But as we take a look at the future, we have a legacy as a church. I want to talk about another church in Revelation chapter 3 that had a legacy. Revelation chapter 3 starting with verse 14. It was a legacy that Jesus himself was telling John to share with this church. It was the church of Laodicea. As you're turning there, I want to recognize uh, someone here that uh, that I feel that um, you need to be aware of. We've had a representative. If you were at the banquet last night, you uh, met some of our folks from around our association. Kevin White and his wife are with us from the Nevada Baptist Convention and uh, celebrating with us this morning. So thank you for being with us this morning. So many folks are celebrating this time. But here's a church that was having trouble with celebrating something that Jesus himself was saying, you really don't have anything to celebrate. And that's kind of hard to take. Dan Bernard wrote, Remember putting your face above a headless frame painted to prevent a, a, to, to present a muscle man, a, a clown, or even a bathing beauty? Many of us had, have had uh, our pictures taken this way. And the photos are humorous because the head doesn't fit the body. You remember those? Sometimes you would go to the circus or the carnival, have that little hole that you stick your head in and you want to be that muscle man or the clown. Never really quite fit. I always think about those character, caricatures, you know. Somebody would make that picture, you got the, the big head. Somebody would draw that and the little body and guy surfing. Remember that? Some of you have that. For some reason, the head did not fit the body. If we could picture Christ as the head of the body, or believers would be, would the world laugh as at the misfit? 
Or would they stand in awe of a human body so closely related to the divine head? That's a good question, wouldn't it? Here is a church in Laodicea that had a, church, had a problem fitting their head, the Christ, with the body. The body of Christ, the church. So let's take a look at that. First of all, Jesus told John that the Laodicea church had a legacy to be useless. Oh, that hurts. Look at this. Verse 14. Write to the angel of the church in Laodicea, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the originator of God's creation says, I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, this gets rough here, and neither hot nor cold, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. That's some strong language, isn't it? Legacy. Webster defines legacy as something transmitted or by or received from an ancestor or predecessor or from the past. And Jesus focuses on what the church of Laodicea would be passing on to the next generation. And I think it's really interesting where it says it really defines on who is telling this to the, to the church through John. He says, he says, I am the amen. The word amen means faithful and true witness. In other words, the one who has seen it all, Jesus himself. It says the originator of God's creation, a member of the Trinity. He always was. If you want to have somebody who's going to speak to the church, it better be the one and only, right? And to see somebody or hear something specific that is speaking to the church, you better listen. If it's something this strong of language, listen up, it says to the church. And he's saying that as a legacy of this church, it's saying, you're useless. How is it useless? He knows everything about, let's just say, quote, the church. Now, we're not talking about a building. We're not talking about a, a foundation that is, that is uh, uh, concrete and then these walls that are put up. We're talking about the family of God, these people that are loved by God that have a purpose. But it says at this point in time, they are useless. They have lack of service, lack of spiritual fire, lack of love for each other, lack of obedience, lack of purpose. It says on your present course, your legacy will be like spiritual vomit. Now that's pretty disgusting, isn't it? But what you want... Wouldn't you hate to have God say, you're, let's just say it, throw up. Harsh words. It says, you will be useless and I will expel you. I would hate to be the church of Laodicea. And then he says, Jesus told the church of Laodicea, second of all, that they are self-centered. Verse 17, because you say I'm rich, I have become wealthy and need nothing. And you don't know that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. <laughs> They've become content in their present situation. Wow. They, they liked being focused on themselves. They liked their easy church life. They did not worry about some uh, of their opposition. You know why they didn't worry about there's any opposition around them? <laughs> because they had no threat. You know, one of the things about the early church is that there was a lot of persecution. 
The church of Laodicea didn't have any persecution because they had no threat because they were useless. They were self-centered and not doing what they needed to do. That's pretty bad, isn't it? They were self-centered. They had everything they needed. Financially, they were not concerned. This was unusual for the church of the day. They were successful in some way. We don't know exactly how they were successful, but they were not successful in the, spiritually. And Jesus said they were actually spiritually ruined. Money and reputation will not be the success story of the church. The success comes from the lives changed due to humility of the people, not self-centeredness. What, what an interesting way of Jesus saying to this church, you're not being a church. What a legacy they were leaving behind. That's painful to hear that. It's not just painful to hear from John the, the revelator, not John the, the preacher, John the apostle, but Jesus himself is saying to him, wow, you're self-centered, you're Useless. But it's going on to say that Jesus tells them to have a different legacy. Now, it'd be one thing if Jesus was telling them, you, you got a problem, and that's just it. But now he's giving them the good news. That's one thing about these churches in, in the early part of Revelation is that he tells them one thing, and you guys are going to have a problem, and then he tells them how to fix it. That's great about God's Word. It's not just about don'ts, it's also about do's, right? He goes on and says, here's how you can change your legacy. Verse 18, I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you may be rich, white clothes that you may be dressed, and your shameful nakedness not be exposed, and ointment to spread on your eyes so that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be committed and repent. What a concept. You mean the church, this Laodicean church has to repent? A church must repent? In this day and age, there's churches just like the church of Laodicea that quite frankly, in this time, in, in, in this country, it's time to repent. Because the church is not being the church. And the churches of America is too busy trying to follow after their own desires. They're trying to follow after what's okay. They're trying to fit into a society. You know what? Jesus did not fit into society. And so if you were to go into the newspaper... I was told, Ken was telling me the other day that there is a list of those who are saying homosexuality is okay. And then there's a list of those denominations who say homosexuality is not okay. In those lists, as many are on that list there's just as many who say that it's okay as there is those who say that it's not okay. God's Word is God's Word and it will always say that it's not okay. Sin is sin and sin will always be sin regardless of what the, word, uh, the, the world says. The Word will always say that sin is sin. And sin separates us from God. And if the church always says that sin will not separate us from God, the, the church is a lie. Okay, I'm getting off of that. How did I go there? My goodness. It says, 
I rebuke you, verse 19. So be committed and repent. Verse 20, listen, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to in to him and have dinner with him and he with me. The victor, I will give him the right to sit with me on my throne just as I also won the victory and sat down with my father on the throne. I love that. <laughs> Jesus said, church, you, you want to change? All it is is open the door and let me in. It's really simple. Repent and let me in. I, it's really not that hard. Jesus said, you want a legacy? Remember, again, Jesus is talking to this Laodicean church. And with this in mind, he tells them specifically how to change that legacy. He says, changing a legacy means that it takes the entire church to do it. Remember, again, church is not a building. Church is people. Church is a, pe a people. And he gives them these specific steps. He says, receives God's spiritual riches that brings true wealth from eternity. Be covered with, with purity and remove the sin of contentment. Thirdly, it says repent so that sin does not close off your communication with the Spirit. And if all this happens, Jesus will fill the church. And what will he fill the church with? Is it a lot of people? Not necessarily. It's a good thing. Great programs, that's a good thing, but that's not necessarily what he's talking about. Wonderful technology, that's a good thing, but it's not necessarily what he's talking about. Financial improvements, those are good things, that's not what he's talking about. No, he says, I will fill the church with, he's saying, himself, that it will take discipline and refinement. A church who has Jesus as the head of the church has honor. Let's switch gears for just a moment. That's the Laodicean church. What is the legacy of First Baptist Church? Well, we have a wonderful legacy. 60 years of amazing things. 60 years of God doing some amazing things with amazing people. 60 years of what he's done through you. And many from the past. We have seen 60 years though of success failures, self-centeredness, spiritual revivals, and individual life changes. Yes, there's those great things and those difficult times. That's called a family of God because you know what? We are human. <laughs> that happens, right? We have seen a legacy of a church built upon the precepts of God's Word. We have seen hundreds of salvations, rededications, baptisms, repaired marriages, developed families, etc., etc. What would our legacy be now? Would it be that of the Laodicean church? or a church transformed by Christ. Let's narrow it down even more. What about you? What would you, as a believer, what would your legacy be? 
Would your legacy be like a member of the Laodicean church? Useless, self-centered? Or would you be one that is built upon the precepts of Christ? Would you be one who says, I'm on fire for Christ? One who is following after Christ? Would you be one that says, regardless of anything else, I put God first in my life? As the one who, regardless of what I face, God is the one who makes my decisions for me. Is that your legacy? Matter of fact, I am so excited about my relationship with Christ that I want to pass that along to those around me. When people see me, do they see Christ in me? That's my legacy. Or what kind of legacy would I leave? God can do amazing things with you. But it takes some refinement and disciplining to make us into what he wants us to be. Sometimes it hurts. That means we have to turn away from what we are self-centered about. Doing our thing. Following after our stuff. Putting ourself first. Be made into what he wants us to be. Let me encourage you right now. At this moment on, Make your legacy known to all that you come in contact with. And make that legacy the same legacy that Christ has made. Fill your life with Christ and he will fill you in an amazing way. But... It's that willingness to be changed. Giving it all to Him in everything.